Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the West Canada Lake Wilderness Area in the Adirondack Mountains in central New York State. This wilderness area is one of the most intact wilderness areas in all of New England, but still bears the scars of timber operations from prior decades. The old-growth forests showcase majestic hemlocks, yellow birch, red maple, and red spruce trees, and the timber scars are growing back in with balsam fir, black spruce, eastern hemlock, and paper birch trees. The bogs and ponds make this area difficult to travel off the trails, and few visitors venture through, save hikers and mountain bikers. Animals that are found here include white-tailed deer, wild turkey, and moose. The predators aren't varied in species, which include bobcats, coyotes, and black bears. But just because there are not many species of predators doesn't mean they aren't dangerous. The North Vale Placid Trail winds through thick bushes and along creek banks at elevations varying between 2,500 and 3,500 feet. The climate is a continental climate with warm rainy summers and very snowy cold winters. The trail puts visitors in the middle of nowhere, which may seem hard to understand given the state's high population, but safety and help are at least eight miles away. The hike out covers steep hills and densely forested valleys if you get into trouble or if it somehow finds you. On September 18, 2013, 22-year-old Amy Stafford was on the third day of a solo hiking trip through the wilderness. She hadn't brought along bear spray or a firearm on her trip, opting to be armed only with her camera and her wits. Being a member of the Army Reserves, while she attended Rochester Institute of Technology, she had confidence and some training in how to handle stressful situations. Having recently climbed all 46 peaks in the Adirondacks, she was experienced at demanding tasks and pushing herself to her limits. The past summer, she had spent time as a lifeguard at Golden Beach State Campground at Raquette Lake and had planned this hiking trip as her farewell to summer before returning to her parents' home in Pennsylvania. Amy had started her adventure in Northville and had pitched camp each of the prior nights along the trail. Near Indian Lake, she'd hiked briskly for a spell before hearing a strange sound behind her. Turning around to investigate what the source of the noise was, Amy was startled to see three black bears about 25 yards behind her. She wasn't alarmed at running into the bears, and quickly snapped a few photos as keepsakes. She figured they would likely move along and leave her be, but what she expected and what occurred would change her life forever. Hiking along, Amy kept an eye on the bears just to make sure they were leaving. They seemed to keep the same distance between them, but didn't leave the trail. Each turn and rise in the trail, the bears continued to follow her. After a few hundred yards of being tailed by the bears, Amy decided she needed to do something powerful to frighten them away. Being a scholar of the backcountry, she'd always heard that making yourself look large and yelling helps drive away curious bears. She lifted her hands above her head and screamed at the bears to go away. Each time she did this, the bears would scamper off a few yards, only to return to the trail and follow her once again. Every so often, Amy would round a bend and the bears would disappear through the foliage. Hearing them running through the brush until they caught sight of her once again made Amy's blood run cold. These bears weren't curious, but seemed to have an uncomfortable fascination with her. Deciding to lean on technology to help her drive the bears off, Amy cranked up the volume on her cell phone and blared her favorite music. Unfazed by the unchained melodies, the bears slowly continued their stalk toward her. Amy's mind began to race as she fought off panic. She knew if these bears had it in mind to kill her and eat her, there wasn't much she could do about it. Throwing rocks and sticks at the bears might trigger aggression from them, she feared. Deciding to pull herself together, she would simply wait to react aggressively toward them when she had to. Now having been stalked by the three bears for the better part of an hour, Amy began to wear down from the stress of the situation. 
Her frustrations grew out of the recognition that she had done everything the textbook said to do, and it wasn't working. The bears continued to slowly plod along behind her, always matching her pace and remaining in sight. Making her way through a mile of trail, the bears began running through the forest alongside Amy to pop out in front of her on the trail. They would bounce on their front legs and chuff at her in an attempt to frighten her into running. Having seen the bears change tactics from following her slowly to running around her and cutting her off, Amy knew that she might be in for a fight for her life. That is when she remembered the knife in her pocket. Reaching her hand into her pocket, she grasped it in her right hand and brandished it toward the bears as she threatened them with her trekking pole in her left hand. The blade of her knife was anything but intimidating, given it was only three inches long, but it was all she had to defend herself with. Her timing couldn't have been better. As soon as she bristled her defense toward the bears, one of them charged in toward her. Amy punched at the bear using all of her might with her right hand. Scantly protruding from her fist, the small blade caught the bear along the jaw. A stream of blood rushed from the bear's wound and covered Amy's hand that held the knife. Without any doubt of the bear's intentions, Amy watched as the wounded bear blurred back toward the other two. The bears immediately disappeared into the dense brush, but had done that several times previously, only to reappear in front of her to ambush her. Walking to the next bend in the trail, Amy began sprinting as soon as the bears were out of sight. Now in fear of her life, Amy fled along the trail toward Lake Durant State Campground to the north. Upon arriving, she pounded on the caretaker's door, still clutching her knife in her right hand. The woman who answered the door, holding her young child, tried to make sense of Amy's stuttered words and blood-covered hand before the young hiker broke down in tears. After calming down, Amy allowed the rangers to examine her backpack as they listened to her account of the bear stalking her. All of her food was freeze-dried and sealed in odor-proof packaging, and there was nothing else she carried that they attributed the bear's behavior to. Knowing they had to investigate, the rangers convinced Amy to return to the attack scene and help them understand just what had happened. Now flanked by armed rangers, Amy led the group back to where she'd stabbed the bear. The investigators examined the track evidence and concluded the bears weighed between 180 and 200 pounds each. It seemed she had narrowly avoided the rare occasion of a black bear exhibiting predatory behavior toward a human being. Given she wasn't injured, Amy received rabies shots as a precaution due to having come in contact with the bear's blood. Amy indicated that the strange and unusual incident will not keep her from hiking in the future, even on solo trips. She stated she contemplated purchasing a can of bear spray, even though her tiny knife seemed to work quite well. The Department of Environmental Conservation of New York State posted bear warning signs at trailheads surrounding Amy's attack. They never did receive further reports of bears acting aggressively in the wilderness area. Amy defending herself may have taught the bears that people aren't the best prey. Wildlife officials indicated the bear would be destroyed if identified. Given there was no food source being defended and no cub sighted in the attack, Amy's attack was labeled a predatory attack. Speaking of cubs, our cub tier membership on Patreon, link below, will give you ad-free early access to our episodes. And the $3 per month will go a long way in helping me continue to produce content like this. Following Amy's incident, officials released the usual instructions for people who may encounter a bear. They said that waving your arms to make yourself look large and yelling may alert the bear to you and prevent an attack. The irony of issuing a prescription for the same behaviors Amy used was apparently missed by them. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. Given Amy's hike measured 46 miles as the crow flies, would she have survived if she wasn't in peak physical shape? Do you think these bears were littermates who had formed a sleuth to take down larger prey? Did Amy's reaction to the bears deter them from attacking people in the future? I'm pretty sure that one with a nice shaving scar learned he messed with the wrong woman. I'll gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. 
We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.